Matt Simmons, mattsimmons.org. And this week has been a rough holy week. It's been hard. It's been lonely. It's been painful. I also notice the further I am away from my last communion, the more difficult it is to remain focused on the Lord, to bring my heart to Him, to be open, the less palpably I experience Him as easily as I used to. It really takes a lot of effort on my part to remain open, not to do more for the Lord, because that won't ever do anything, but to remain open to Him. And when times like this come where it's difficult and it's dark and it's lonely and it's dry and it's, dare I say, desolate, it's real easy to defect and move off track. St. Ignatius tells us though that in times of desolation, in times of difficulty, dryness, strain, of any kind there, that we should lean into it with much prayer. That's precisely the moment that we should open up more not be more distant and more resistant, which is what we tend to do. In myself and in everybody I work with, almost everybody, that's what I see as a consistent thing. We tend to withdraw in these times that are difficult instead of lean in. And this is really the lesson of Good Friday, isn't it? See, the Lord, when He experiences all this Thursday night, tonight, when he experiences the agony in the garden and the distress of what's to come, the distress of the pain, the distress of death, the distress of, of, of absence of God's presence, right? Think about that for a minute. Jesus didn't somehow experience God and his nearness when he was on the cross. That's why he cries out, Father, why have you forsaken me? It's not that the Father does actually forsake him but the experience of nearness and intimacy is removed. The thing I've been reflecting on today is this is a greater call into this loneliness, a deeper identification with him. That's the grace to be had if we lean into this time. Lean into this time of, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you refused to give me your son in the Holy Eucharist? Why have you pulled him? Why have you removed the palpable presence, the physical presence of yourself from me? And as we enter into that suffering, to remember we're not alone in it. That's the very point of prayer. The Catechism says that when God's thirst and our thirst meet, that's when prayer happens. That painful longing underneath the loneliness, that desire that's there, that's getting laid bare <clears throat> is the very thing that the Lord wants you to bring forward. It's the very thing He wants me to bring forward. An important thing to remember in this time is that God is generous. He is generous. And the more open we are with Him, the more we'll receive from Him. So He will not withhold His Easter graces from us. He won't withhold them. He'll give them abundantly. But it's not going to be so easy on us this time. We can't just la di da di da through Lent and go to Easter Mass and experience His presence. What He's requiring of us and asking us for is a deeper revelation of His heart. Or a deeper revelation of our heart, rather. And in revealing our heart more, he'll reveal his heart more. And we will have a Easter full of grace, full of intimacy, as he enters into that loneliness. So open your heart to him, particularly as we move through Holy or Good Friday, Holy Thursday today, Good Friday tomorrow, Easter Vigil Saturday, Easter on Sunday. Practically, what does that look like? Right now, I'm experiencing a pain and a loneliness. And so what do I do is I feel it. I focus on it in the Lord. 
Jesus, I'm experiencing this loneliness. I'm experiencing this pain right now. I wish you were near. I wish I could just get up tomorrow morning and go see you and receive you. I wish that I could have been doing that all along. Jesus, please be with me in this pain. Touch me in my loneliness, Lord. And give him a minute. Give him a moment to enter in to speak to you. What I experience in that is him say, keep walking, good and faithful servant. Keep moving ahead. And this has been the theme of this whole time. Because my own spiritual life, what usually happens is I get into these situations, these moments where it's painful, where it's hard. And then I defect. And I don't stay present which I've done a little bit, but not to the extent that I used to. And so what I'm hearing from the Lord is an encouragement to keep moving. See, the Lord rejoices in the right. He rejoices in the right. He doesn't rejoice in the wrong. That's what love is. He sees us for who he created us to be and who we desire to be, not how we're presenting. And he wants to draw that forward. See, what the cross really reveals is none of that garbage I said in the beginning. How bad we are, how horrible we are, or so on. What the cross really reveals is our value, is your value. You are valuable to God the Father. Your value is no less than the value of Jesus Christ himself. The value of something is what you'll pay for it. Anybody who's bought and sold a house understands this. I just sold a house and bought a house last summer, almost a year ago now, nine months, ten months ago. You list it for a price and you pray to God you get it, right? But the value is whatever somebody actually pays for it. It's not what you list it at or, or anything else. It's what you pay for it. Well, God paid the price of his only son, Jesus, for you to reestablish communion, relationship, and intimacy with you. He doesn't see you how you see yourself. He sees you as he created you to be. And so your life is just as valuable as Jesus' life in the eyes of the Father. So take some time to meditate on this. Bring this forward. Get in front of a crucifix. Maybe go to your parish where the host is still reserved in the tabernacle and gaze upon Christ on the cross and see your value coming through. See how amazing and important you are to the Father. Let him tell you how much of a gift you are to him, how important you are, how much he loves you, how much he's created you for a purpose. How much the world would be a lesser place without you. Let him touch your heart and move your heart. Receive that grace deeply because then you will respond. And all the grace that's here for you, you'll receive. See, when Jesus says it is finished, it really is finished. What's finished? is the reuniting of humanity and divinity back together again. That is finished. Humanity has access to the divinity again. If you're a baptized Christian, you have divinity within you, the fullness of divine life. All power, all peace, all patience, all kindness, all hope, all love, all joy dwells within you. God himself dwells within you. It is finished also means you're forgiven completely and totally 
for everything you've ever done, everything you'll do, and everything you're doing right now. The question is, is are you going to receive that and respond to it? Are you going to receive that grace and respond to it? So get in front of that crucifix, get in front of him in the tabernacle maybe, if you can. And open yourself to receive this grace. To receive this grace. Bring your loneliness. Bring your pain. Bring all that's negative in you to him. One more prayer exercise I'll give you quickly. Is you can imagine Jesus on the cross before you. As you're sitting there with him. Imagine him on the cross before you. Maybe even if you're using a handheld crucifix. Take that crucifix and put it on your chest. Like this. Take the crucifix and put it on your chest. Imagine Jesus in front of you. And whatever negative feelings, whatever negative thoughts, whatever negative desires, whatever negative experience you're having, push that with your fingers into the wounds on his side. He longs to take your pain and he longs to replace it with love, with peace, and with joy. <laughs>